so treat for me <laughs> we were back for our second coffee chat this week because we missed a couple of weeks because we were away and there's so many points that we want to talk about so before we get started into our topic for the day Bryce how are you doing I'm good this is a treat for me too you texted me yesterday about doing a second coffee chat and I was like hell yeah let's do it <laughs> so uh, it's just um first and foremost I think there's just so many things on people's minds at the moment and there's a lot of people telling people what to do what to think what to do this and it's just recoiling me a lot at the moment because the reason I like having these conversations was just you chatting and I chatting out loud is it's just our thoughts mm -hmm. it's just to talk through between friends and hopefully it can help if bits resonate for some people but I did want to start before we start just saying that people I've been having so many um, messages on the various social media and emails saying that people have been unsubscribed from my YouTube so if people could go to my Catherine Edwards .life news um, website, there's a sign up for the newsletter. Now, on that newsletter, I do not spam people at all, but I can share a lot of information on there because I'm getting a lot of people asking me about particular health solutions that I work with. And I can't say a lot of it on here. So that's the type of thing I share in my newsletter. Um, so today we were going to talk about something that's certainly very dear to my heart at the moment about being patient and not making decisions from a fear place of fear when you're or when you're feeling in that fear vibration or lower vibration because I think it's something that's affecting a lot of people at the moment with how long this uncertainty is going on. Oh, absolutely, it's affected me too. I mean, it's a, it's kind of comical because patience is probably the biggest lesson for me this whole life is having patience um and there's a joke like if you ask god for patience be, be careful what you ask for but if, if you ask god for patience he's going to bring situations into your life that's going to teach you patience right it's that's the thing about life is nothing's just handed to us on a silver platter we have to achieve it by working through it and learning and maybe that's the big lesson for us all right now is because Catherine, did you think we'd still be sitting here in 2022 summer of 2022 not in a million years. I don't think anyone did. And it, it, I think this subject goes very hand in hand with what we talk about all the time about embracing the present moment. Because the thing is, is when you're not being patient, there's a danger that you're constantly wishing your life away. You know, we've talked a lot about when this happens, when that happens. And the thing is, is all you're doing then is giving your power away and putting your your happiness, your peace, your gratitude into the future and, and something that is you're telling energetically is unattainable. But it's funny you should say about the patients because I used to be and I still have got tendencies in that direction the most impatient person. I mean, my friends used to make a joke that they'd put hurry up on my gravestone. <laughs> Because I was always wanting to do so many things at once. And I have learned a lot about that recently. I really have. And I think, you know, when you lose anyone very close to you, that can really bring that back very strongly as well, because you realise just how, how fleeting this moment that we're on this planet is in this current body. Yes, it is. And, and, um, it's interesting because I, I've said this to you, Catherine, I, I know we're all ready for the flip. And uh, part of me is, is um, kind of, I mean, I'm an Aquarian. We're kind of bohemian uh, Zodiac, you know, we're, we're very detached and we live and let live. And, but I'm, I've gotten very frustrated with uh, the monotony of every single day, waiting, 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 when is this going to happen? Well, when this flips, this happens. And it's like, well, no, but even though my day is very much the same, I actually like my life. Yeah. No, it's not what I want with the flip right now. I still like my life. Like I still have a really good life. I have so many amazing, wonderful friends, including yourself. And, you know, I've got a roof over my head. And I know that's one thing we spoke about before we hit record is a lot of people are feeling that impatience and fear because of the money situation. And I, I get that. Like, I totally get that. Um, but you know, it's like, it, it, so we do, we do start to make decisions hastily based in a, in a lower vibration of fear. And whenever an, a, a decision is made, well, unless it's like, you know, you have to make a split decision to save your life. That's a good decision based in fear. But other than that, it, sometimes those are not the best decisions to make and being able to like sit into something and settle into it and settle into the fear and to get to the bottom of it and understanding that this is a part of a bigger picture and having that patience. And also with patience comes trust. Yeah. Trusting the divine plan. 
Yeah, it's so important, that trust. And, and you know, looking at your situation, obviously that's going to be different to everyone that's watching this. You know, so some people, like you and I have spoken, that at the moment we're really, really happy with our personal situations and that's really great place to be in. There's going to be other people that aren't and it, that's when there's a, a clear message from the universe that you need to make changes in your life from one point to the other. So, when you look at everything that's coming as a message and, and with everything that's become so obvious over the last couple of years, one thing that has become very obvious is that as a human race, a lot of us put value on things that are just not serving us at all. You know, material possessions, you know, look at um, what we eat, look at the fact that we can make time to listen to a podcast or, or watch something on Netflix or, or go, go out drinking with friends, but people can rarely make time to cook a healthy meal for the family now. You know, priorities have gone so off shift and it's not helping us. So sometimes, just like we've said, when the freedom's being taken away from you, make you realise how hard you want them and that you're not going to let that happen. I think that can be the same on the financial side of things is making you take a really hard look sometimes at what are you spending your money on? What are you spending your energy on? And what are you attracting into your life? I mean, certainly I think, you know, in your country, in my country, the cost of living is going up exponentially and salaries on. So there's a lot of people that are really, really feeling the pinch now. And that's when we have to sit in that trust and not jump into doing something that we might regret later. Because as you said, unless you're about to be eaten by the lion, it's never a good decision unless your life's in danger to make a decision from a fear because, you know, you will repent at leisure. It will, it will yeah. never be in your highest interest. Well, and I think too, and like for me, I, I'm not really like a money person anyway. I always laugh and say that's why I've always dated four men is because I never really cared about that was not something I ever really cared about because I was more interested in the person than their resume, you know? And um, I think too, I've, I've noticed a lot, especially in America, it's probably the same in the United Kingdom as well. It's probably the same in Canada, Australia, Europe, uh, uh, even maybe some, some countries in the East where our expectation for life and what we expect and level of comfort that we expect when that starts to shift and we start to experience, I don't think we realize that we actually can live on less than we take in. If that makes sense, unless you go Absolutely. to other countries. And so that might be the big lesson for a lot of us right now before there's a financial. Now I, I don't know if the financial flip is all of a sudden we're all just going to have money. I think that might be kind of dangerous actually just to give everybody a bunch of money when they have been through such trauma. Like there needs to be some kind mm -hmm. of process of like, trauma therapy. And, and so you're not reacting and still in the same way you were before, but um, it, it's also a lesson, like say, you know, and I, I tell myself because even in the yoga sutras and Sri Swami Satita Nanda's commentary, he talks about this, you know, the whole point of yoga is to find yourself in total alignment with, with source, with God and allowing your brain to take kind of the back seat, the ego to take a back seat. Right. And he brings up like when things like anxiety, fear, um, all that kind of stuff starts to come up. It's a way to show you where you're mistrusting, where you're not trusting source. You're not trusting God. And I, 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 and I'm saying that to myself too, because I absolutely struggle with anxiety for sure. 100% struggle with anxiety. So that's a lesson for me as well. And I always have to remind myself that I've never been led astray. I've yeah. never been led astray. There's it's everything is always worked out. And so what makes me think at this point, it's not going to work out at the, what makes me think after 39 years on this earth, all of a sudden, God's not going to be there. The universe isn't going to be there, you know? And, and, um, and when we do live in that place of fear, it's, it's, I think that's when we start to cut off energetically from opportunities as well. Right. We Absolutely. Start to you know? And so we end up, we end up being our own worst enemy. We end up self-sabotaging. Yeah, it's a completely true. So I think it's so important to recognize it because we talk about vibration a lot, resonance, um, your energetic field that you're putting out, whichever, all of these things are relevant. And when you are feeling yourself going into that fear vibration, which we all do, I mean, why are we talking about it today? Because I was sharing something with Bryce before we started about how I could feel myself going in there for one particular area of my life. 
And it's so important that when you recognize it, then you can choose to switch it and do something about it. And as you say, ask yourself those questions. So some of my, some of the tips we can share about what we do when we feel ourselves slipping into that vibration. And the first thing I do is concentrate on my breath mm -hmm. to stop it going down further. And what I'll do is just very simple breathing. You don't need anything elaborate. You know, I'll do the four count, breathe in for four, count out for six. Just slow down your breathing. Don't force the exhale just to bring your body back into more of a, a balanced, calm state. And then quite often it's a bit, what is it, Byron Katie, who asked, you know, is it real? Yeah. That's the next place I go to. Is this real? Is this a real crisis situation that I need to really react to? Or is it not? Have I got time? Do I need to learn something from this? Is there something more in there? Yeah. And I would tell people to look up what catastrophe thinking is. Um, I did not know what that was until my therapist pointed it out to me. And a lot of people, you don't have to have PTSD or CPTSD to go to catastrophe thinking. If you have any type of anxiety, it, it, it could, that could happen. And so catastrophe thinking is when your brain you don't do it intentionally. Your brain just jumps to the worst case scenario for every. And, and when I learned about that, it was a way for me to actually sit back and say, wait a minute, what's the likelihood of that happening? You know, yeah. like what's the likelihood of this happening? Like, this is me catastrophe thinking I can label it. I know what it is. It's not, it's my thought. It doesn't belong to me. It's just part of an anxiety. And, um, and I think you're, and somebody said too, like, uh, there's someone, you know, is this going to matter in five, five years from now? Yeah, exactly. That's a very, very good question to ask people, ask yourself, isn't it? And what you've shared there, I mean, it's something really useful that you've learned from a really good therapist. And sometimes labels can be really helpful, can't they? Because they can instantly make it understandable for you and put it in perspective. Yeah, it's, it's, it's you being able to organize your thoughts. Mm. And once you're able to realize, I think that your thoughts aren't necessarily you, but a reaction to a situation only, then you can actually start to separate yourself from the core issue. And once you can do that, you have then have power over it. Yeah. And that's very, yeah, very, very helpful. And that's, and I know we were talking about this before we started filming. I know people have a, a bad view on therapy, but not all therapists are bad. Not all therapists are part of the controllers guys. My, th my trauma therapist was amazing. She's amazing. And she saved me. So, um, or I saved myself. She just taught me how to save myself. So, you know, yeah, and this, is what, this is what's so lovely, isn't it? As you say, there's so many tools out there for people. But the first step is to recognize, isn't it, that you're yeah. slipping into that vibration thought pattern, because once you recognize it, you can then you open up a lot of choices to do something about it. If you can't recognize it, then you don't have the choices available to you to actually shift it. Yeah. And that's in that the breathing is fantastic too. You're talking about because the breath is connected to the nervous system. So once you can calm the nervous system down, you can start to uh, hopefully think more rationally and think clearer. And if that still is, if you're still catastrophe thinking, you can go, well, is this, is this the actual worst case scenario that probably won't happen? You know, is, is, um, is what we have nothing but to fear, but fear itself, you know, and, um, and, and yeah, so there's all these different practices you can do, but yeah, it is recognizing when, when, when that fear takes over, instead of you controlling the fear, the fear is controlling you. And life's too yeah. short to let fear control you. I mean, I know I've shared because I do struggle with complex post traumatic stress disorder. So it's an, it is an anxiety disorder. And once you have that, you don't ever really get rid of it, you just learn how to tame it. And so I know I know, for me, I have weird um, OCD about certain there's certain things I'm very OCD about that are ridiculous. Like, I'll get really finicky about how the, the towels are folded in the bathroom, like something very, very strange like that. But now I know when that kicks in that I'm trying to control something because there's something outside of inside of me that I, I don't feel like I'm in, in control of. Does that make sense? So we start to yeah. see patterns it's, that mm. we do that are actually just showing us they're highlighting for us that there's something inside of us that needs to be uh, realigned. And once you can recognize that, you can turn that stress and actually, as our friend Shanti says, turn the lead to gold, alchemize it, start breathing, start journaling to bring yourself back to a grounded space so you can have a clearer perception of what is actually happening in your life. And it makes so much sense why so many people are feeling this at the moment, because, of course, so many people have felt for the last couple of years 
that a lot of their choices have been taken away from them. Now, whether that's real or not is a different matter. It is in some circumstances, but not necessarily in all. But it doesn't matter. That's the point. The individual doesn't matter. It's their perspective at the time. And so, therefore, they'll try and take control back in other ways. And we see those, you know, being reflected in behaviours that are then unfortunately reinforcing that loop of lower and lower in the vibration. And the reason, one of the reasons we wanted to have this chat today is because we have had quite a lot of people reaching out saying they're feeling this. And it's to recognise that it's okay to feel that. It's absolutely yeah. okay to feel it. that. It's completely, you know, understandable. And let's give yourself a back on, pat on the back if you are recognising that you're feeling that because now there's so many tools that you can employ to do something about it. And I, I was listening to a teacher a, a couple of days ago and she was talking about a yoga teacher. She was, she was talking about the patterns of anxiety and she said something super interesting too, that I, I want, cause we've talked about this, Catherine, like excitement is excitement. Yeah. Or good depends on the person's perspective. And she was saying that even when you go through a change, a really good change in your life, it can, it can still result in some anxiety. There can, st- really? there can still be a, a trauma response to something good. It's that extreme change that is what causes that panicky anxiety. So it's not just the fact that uh, like this, these last couple of years have been hell on earth, but it's not just that there's also when good things happen, it can cause as wild as that sounds, it can cause a reaction like, and, and, and an anxiety based reaction because everything's changed, even if, if it, even if it's for the better. Right. And so, and so yeah. just acknowledging that, and I've said this before too, like we're all, you know, there is no such thing as reality. It's all perception. And expectation is also the thief of joy, right? So we've expected, we've expected that we were going to be living in this utopia by this point, and it hasn't happened. But that expectation is the thief of joy. And so a hundred percent is, you know, anytime it's even, you know, the problem is, it's even when people are saying, Oh, I'm so looking forward to my holiday. Yeah, you can have something to look forward to and then get back enjoying your current day to day life. Because th- this, I think this is one of the biggest lessons that I've seen, and I'm noticing it a lot in interactions with people and things is this living on the never never. And again, it just doesn't serve you. You cannot do that as a species in nature. It's against all your survival instincts. If you're not focused on the right here, right now, then you're in trouble because you're not putting your attention where it really needs to be. So for example, we were talking um, before we started filming about grounding and how important that is for people. That's very, very important for people, isn't it? Particularly if they feel they're fitting into that fear vibration. Yeah. And one thing you can see too, for those who are new to this and are experience starting to like analyze these emotions, they're feeling, um, we, we, we're escape artists, human beings. Like we don't want, like we, we will try to use escapism a lot, which I think a lot of people right now are so focused on the flip because they're trying to escape the uncomfortableness of what's happening now, but that's not the point of point is to be here in the moment, you know, and to work through that. And, you know, and so I, you know, we always say in order to like, come up into the higher chakra points, you have to actually descend into your body, you have to actually go deep into your own self. Um, and if I noticing about the chakra system, that base one is Muladhara, that's all about being in your body about being here on this earth in this present moment. And, and so part of grounding is actually coming back to yourself. And I've noticed that a lot, like we've talked about Catherine, like, past lives are super interesting. They're super cool. I know we've all had them with each other, but when you're so focused on the past lives situation, what are you avoiding in this life? What are you Absolutely. avoiding in this experience? Cause you're not there now that you're not there. You're here at this moment. So this is the life. This it's life. so, so important that I, I mean, it really is so, so important on so many different levels because you cannot shift anything in your life, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whether it's spiritual, until you accept it and understand why it's there for you at this time. You know, you can you can do displacement activities, you can do whatever you like, but until you've actually really sat with it, acknowledged it, and if there's a lesson there to be learned, which there always is, learned the lesson, it's not going to go. It's just going to keep coming back and keep coming back and get more and more extreme. Oh, yeah. So it's much better to do it now 
Yeah. Oh yeah. It's not going anywhere. That karma is not going anywhere, guys. That's your work. Karma is a beautiful thing. It's your, it's your work in this life. It's what you're working through and it's not going anywhere. And you know, the whole perspective of the universe is that we're, we live forever anyway. So the universe is like, take as much time as you need. You need to do this again in the next life. Sure. We'll do it again in the next life. So you are the one in the driver's seat as to how quickly you move through this stuff. You are the one that gets to decide that by depending on whether you want to actually sit and be uncomfortable and work through that or keep escaping and then living in a fear-based state. It's all in your power. And that's, and that's the biggest plot twist there is, is that it's all in your power to do that. It's no, but it's, it's not in the controller's power. It's not in your bank's power. It's in your power. That's the plot yeah. twist. So I'd be really interested for people to let us know in the comments below, because everyone's going to have their own tips that work for them. And the thing is, we are all individual. Everyone's circumstances are different. So having a range of tips, I'd like to think about it as not my spice cupboard in my kitchen you know, I'll be drawn to different spices on different days, you know, depending on how I'm feeling physically and emotionally. And that's what I like to have with all these biohacks or health tips or, or just general good old getting back to life lessons. I was listening to a fascinating podcast about being more human. And, and there's so many things that we've lost connection with. So for example, anyone who sees me out on my daily walks, I always wear the minimalist barefoot shoes. And my favorite pair have got holes all over them, but I'm not throwing them away because they still function perfectly. I look a bit odd, but they're so comfortable. But the thing is, is this to me was a really good lesson for people. So when you wear minimalist barefoot shoes or go barefoot instead of normal shoes or trainers or really expensive running shoes or anything, you regain 60% of the strength in your foot and 40% more balance. Mm -hmm. Now, there's this link between physical and usually I can't always walk barefoot because there's loads of spikes and holly trees and things like that. So I choose to wear something very minimal because otherwise I'm going to spend my whole life getting thorns out my feet. But you imagine what that does on every single level. 40% more balance, 60% more mobility, stability and strength from your feet. Imagine what that does on a physical level but yeah. also a spiritual level to yourself on the grounding. And these things are so, so simple. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm starting thinking like, this is why we practice yoga barefoot. This exactly. is why um, you, you can look at re reflexology uh, charts and see like how the foot connects to the overall body. And if you like, I live in a city. So if I go to walk down the street barefoot, I might be stepping on needles. Who knows what I'm going to step on. Yeah. But, um, but I can be barefoot in my house. And Absolutely. I can turn music on and dance around barefoot, you know, and, and look at animals. Animals are barefoot. I know. Look at them all. They're completely barefoot and you adapt and you feel so much for that. And you've got that instant connection. So there's so many different tools. You know, yes, you can get some amazing grounding mats and grounding tools, but you can also just go and find somewhere in nature and just stand there, come rain or shine barefoot, even if you're not moving around. In your house, if you do some basic exercises, just barefoot and just feel how much more stable you use. And if you feel more stable physically, and I've seen this work on every single body type, age group, you know, disability and everything. It's amazing how much more confidence it gives you because if you've, we all know there's such a link between physical health, emotional health, spiritual health. But when you feel you're getting that strength and control back physically, it has such a knock on effect about how you feel about how you can cope with everything else that life's throwing you. And that is why, so I always tell, even though like in my lineage of yoga, it's, it's extreme, like leg behind the head stuff, but I always tell students, we are, we're never going to ask you to get more flexible, but we are going to ask you to get stronger. Yeah. Because getting stronger physically, it's something shifts in you emotionally and, and mentally and spiritually too. When you have that, that kind of autonomy and that control over your physical body in a very healthy way. But it's funny. I was giggling because I have a pair of yoga pants, Catherine, that are probably 10 years old that have holes in like all the wrong places. Yeah. I won't throw them away because they're my favorite pants. I know I don't wear them out. I only wear them here to practice here. You know, the refrigerator and my dog sees me in these pants. They literally have holes in all the wrong places. And so many people have said to me, aren't you going to throw those away? I'm like, 
how dare you these are my favorite bands <laughs> yeah, i know it is it's that special special connection isn't it it really yeah. is and i did meet this chap out um yesterday when i went, was wearing mine and it was pouring with rain and it was just absolutely gorgeous and you know i was looking quite smart the rest of me and you look down at my feet this was his holes, but they're just gorgeous. They're so, so comfortable. So I'm keeping them until they literally disintegrate on my feet. <laughs> my pants are going to have to disintegrate before I get Exactly. Like, they're going to have to person, disintegrate. It's almost person chic, you know? It's like, but yeah, yeah, no. And it's, it's, and I would say too, something if you live, like I, I live in a city, but I'm, you know, if I drive up a couple hours north into the Appalachian Mountains, I can be like in nature. And I know Monday I'm going up with some friends uh, Monday afternoon just to get into nature. And we're going to go stand. There's fresh running water. And if you stay, even the Cassiopeians talk about this. If you can stand barefoot in fresh running, wanting fresh running water in nature, in the mountains, wherever you are, it will, uh, it will change your, it'll change your physical body too. Completely. You know, so that's just an easy if you if you live close, like Catherine lives out in the country, so she's probably close to body. You know, you can just go. Yeah, see. we've got some lovely streams near here and everything. And it was so interesting you say that because look how often your animals will choose to do that. Cats not so much because they don't need any help; they're already connected. But <laughs> if you look at the cows, the horses, the dogs, they love just standing in there in the flowing water. Robbie will lay in it. Yeah, he'll just lay in the water. That's a he. That a, he just he lays in it. And um, it, it is so, and it just, the air feels clean and it just feels, you know, this is where we're going that we we won't be able to get cell phone reception. You know, it's, so it's no, not even a point to bring your phone. You know, you have to be connected. Nature's going to force you to connect with it because you're a part of it. And, um, and you, you look with, you look with nature, it's like, it's kind of cheesy, but like in the autumn and that we call it fall here in America, the leaves, the, the trees don't hold, the trees don't begrudgingly hold on to their leaves. They let them go absolutely without, without fear they know that even though they don't know for sure they still know and trust that at the spring new leaves will come and not even do they let them go willingly and trust and do it but also by letting them go they're guaranteeing the survival of other plants and everything they're providing those leaves are providing shelter for loads of animals they're putting nutrients back into the soil so if they didn't let go what no longer was serving them it would have such a knock-on effect on all other aspects of nature isn't it that the same as us look at the effect of us not letting go of um you know coming back to the you know it's what we were starting about the patience and the making the decisions from the fear you know i started off this conversation with with bryce sharing something that i was and as soon as you've shared it you can start the solution start coming to you straight away so i hope that everyone who's watching this has got someone whether it's a tree a dog a stream a person in your life that you can share it with and if you haven't then this is a safe place for you to share it on our channels and put it there and that you'll get the support from the community here that you need because when when you do share it that's the first stage to letting it go don't you yeah. think yeah it's like it's not letting it fester because it's like it, it's like a if you have an infected wound that you don't allow to heal it will just the infection will just get worse but when you actually let it ooze and let it kind of heal itself yeah. and so if you're letting it out and talking about it that's exactly 100 percent. and i think we're i think i think with patience too you, we have this uh, um nasty pride that some of us carry that ends up being the downfall of ourselves or we don't want to admit our vulnerabilities we don't want to admit where we where we're feeling afraid and that's coming from the ego and i posted something on my twitter a while ago where i said ego to me is a turnoff yeah i wanna, I, I respect people more who are humble and who admit when they're afraid or when they're wrong or when they, they don't know what to do that that to me is the true strength is somebody who is able to to be in that place of, of, of uncertainty and express that that's true strength having Absolutely. an ego and trying to just hide it that to me is disgusting that's not true strength that's fake you know so so and I, hopefully that's one of the lessons we'll take out of this experience is learning how to be vulnerable and learning that it's okay you're a human being you're not a demigod you're a human being you know you're you, we're all on this journey as as we say we're all we're all just walking each other home like we're all just trying to figure it out and so it's okay Life would be boring if we never had the ups and downs, if we never had the experiences to learn from. So, and don't yeah. let, don't let that expectation steal your joy. 
you can have joy today in this moment yeah absolutely you can really choose to have joy in the not knowing and and my final point in it is I what I've also realized today with the conversation I was having with someone else is how many times the the lack of patience is driven by external influences so so often when you really start talking about things a lot of people are actually really happy where they are it's the allowing the external expectations to come in and it's those external if if anyone else in your life is putting an expectation on you like that that's coming from their point of lack yep you know, it really is and they're projecting their um frustrations and and lack of direction onto you because if anyone else is expecting you to be anywhere else than where you are then you know just be cautious of that oh absolutely absolutely they're projecting onto you 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 are right where you and you have to trust that that's again going to that you have to trust that you are right where you are supposed to be yeah absolutely fantastic oh thank you so much your trip sounds amazing that will be i know i can't wait for you to teleport over here so i uh, definitely because even though we've got so much nature over here in the uk but yours is really really remote because obviously it's so much bigger whilst when you're in the uk you're actually never that far away from civilization it might feel like it at times but you're not yeah. geographically but hey who knows how far we really are from you as we i know said i'm thinking anyway. we're probably just a paddle boat, boat trip away <laughs> i'm waiting to find out it would be absolutely hysterical if it was wouldn't it so we just I did, to each other yeah, i did sort of say if it is then just send the sun over again because we're yeah. in June now and it's look i'm sitting here in my jump again i can't show off my suntan so teleport um, over here it's I, hot as hell here so <laughs> yeah exactly exactly well thank you so much and thanks so much for everyone who's listening to these chats we hope you enjoy them i have my lovely cup of herbal tea in my lovely flask of cup and please please do let us and other people know um below you know what what works for you what do you do how do you recognize it and how do you switch it because there'll be lots of solutions that we haven't talked about and um you just need one you just need one that works for you that's all you need so yeah. have fun folks thanks bryce and we will be back i think on saturday with jamie where we will be doing the second of the fifth agreements book and talking through that. So that's going to be, uh, it will probably link in quite well to this conversation actually. So we'll be back then. Lots yeah. of love everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.